So the good people at Task and Purpose recently broke the most obvious news story in existence. Militaries love to drink. In an article published around Independence Day, the military publication took a look back at the history of booze in the U.S. Armed Forces, going all the way back to the rowdy Continental Army and Patriot militias. Somewhere right now, an NCO is writing up a private for doing a beer bong upside down and naked on the second floor of a barracks. And their staff NCO is preparing his libo brief to say that that sort of behavior is unbecoming to whichever branch he's in. And I'm here to tell you that historically, getting shit-faced and doing stupid stuff is very becoming of whichever branch you're in. <laughs> Going all the way back to 1775, when the Marine Corps was founded in a bar, to the entirety of the Revolutionary War, when Washington's army was eagerly pillaging the wine stocks of captured British officers, we were a thirsty and rowdy bunch. There's well-documented instances of troops drinking for fun and to cope with the horrors of war, and even to celebrate. Old Wood Teeth himself, the father of our country, George Washington, famously got blasted with other officers and higher-ups upon defeating the British. That party was the stuff of legend, with the booze tab in today's to dollars totaling over 17 grand. Daddy G-dubs racked up a bill enough ta big enough tab to buy a used Corolla, and you're telling me that we can only have a six-pack in our barracks room? Alcohol as a tradition and as a crutch would be utilized throughout the U.S. military's history. Hell, booze used to be rationed to troops, like Tabasco sauce or cheese spread. <laughs> you imagine fighting with the hipster of the platoon over whichever MRE comes with the lazy, hazy IPA? <laughs> to this day, we still embrace this tradition. Kind of. The Army has its grog bowls. Officers of multiple branches have wet downs. The Marines have their mess nights and their infamous birthday ball. And the Air Force has, I don't know, daily mimosa brunch, probably. What about you, Space Force? What do you nerds drink? Cosmos, ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, okay, I'll haze myself for that later. Anyway, as prevalent as these traditions can be, there are a lot of puritanical attitudes towards alcohol among commands. Commanders strictly limit the booze that we can have in our barracks in quantity and type, regardless of drinking age. Meaning even if you're 21, you can only have six beers in your fridge. Quick point of order on that, the Sergeant Major of the Army recently accepted a proposal to address this grave injustice. As should he, and so should the rest of the branches. But alcohol downrange remains a complete and utter no-go. This doesn't mean nobody drinks while deployed, this just means that service members risk getting in trouble for drinking while deployed. I mean, come on, let's be honest, guys. Who among you hasn't traded a nudie mag for a bottle of fuck knows what from a local in Iraq or Afghanistan? Or got care packages with suspicious bottles of Listerine? And I have it on good authority that an anonymous source, who may or may not contribute to this show, that an artillery attachment on Camp Fallujah once tried to make their own prison wine with a plastic bag and scraps of fruit from the DFAC, and it almost made all of them go blind. <laughs> My point is, why the f can't we have a drink on deployment? It's built into our DNA. And not just since the birth of America have warriors been imbibing in something to take the edge off. Since Odysseus's troops were chugging wine and fighting cyclopses, and drinking is what we do. Our two tattoo regs come and go. Hair and grooming standards change from time to time. Hell, we even have different genders now. Look, change is good when implemented properly. And we're a dynamic species in a dynamic society. And we should change our ways and rules when appropriate. So change the drinking rules. Even relaxing them a little would remove the need for troops to partake in secret, which creates way more issues than if they could have a brew or two in the open. Look, I'm not saying throw a keg in the back of a track for a mounted patrol or anything, but why the can't the troops drink? If we're mature enough to fight a war, then we're mature enough to have a few rounds after a long week of dodging them. And if it's in the open, it will be easier to control, not harder. Time and time again, we've only seen that prohibition doesn't stop a behavior or the movement of a product. It only creates black markets. So bring back alcohol rations. Let our guys and gals in uniform take the edge off. Let them celebrate. Let them commiserate. Let them live like warriors, goddammit. And if they have a problem, let it be seen so it can be addressed. Stop forcing people to binge drink in secret dark corners that only hinders morale and operational readiness. The Founding Fathers fought, bled, and drank their way into building us a new nation. They may have been far from perfect, but they had the blueprints for a society that they knew had the potential to be better than they were. In fact, they were so aware of their own faults that they knew no free government could work if it relied on the whims of one man. They knew that it had to be run for and by the people, so they refused to install another dictatorship after ripping the yoke of the British Empire off our backs and handing us a more perfect union. In their wisdom, 
They gave us a robust representative democracy. And they were wise enough to know that soldiers are gonna f***ing drink. So get with it or get the f*** out of the way. That's all from us today, folks. We gotta go. It's been a long goddamn week, so I'm gonna relax with a couple of cold ones until the Navy needs to make a video about me because my pronouns are drank and drunk. Cheers, everyone. What's going on, guys? If you like that, click this link here to watch more. If you're ready to subscribe and keep us in business, click on this link here. And you know the Selective Service is coming back. <laughs> I don't wanna keep my day job, so subscribe.